Welcome back to the second episode of Lucy Investigates. In episode one, I asked you guys what your go-to film camera was, and I had so much fun reading all of your responses and finding out about new film cameras. So I thought for episode two, I would ask you what your favorite film stock of all time is. I put a call out on Instagram, on my stories, and also here on YouTube. Wow, you guys really came through on this one. I had so many great responses and awesome choices of film stocks and example photos. Let's get into it and share which films ranked the highest, which films you guys wish were still around, and of course, Course, share all of your beautiful work. Don't forget to stick around to the end to find out what my favorite film stock is. I had a lot of responses, so I decided to put all of the information into a pie chart so it would be easier to share with you guys. When I started this YouTube channel, I never thought I'd be making pie charts. So as you can see here, 50% of you chose the more well-known, readily available stocks that I would have expected, but the other 50% chose a really varied range of stocks. But more on those later. Let's start off with the more popular ones and talk about why you guys chose them and share some photos as well. I thought that Portra 400 by far would be the most popular color film, but as you can see by my pie chart, it is actually Kodak Gold in this case. So Larry Charles, he has chosen Kodak Gold. He said, I go back and forth with Color Plus, but the champion film stock for me is Kodak Gold. For a consumer grade film, it's Sandy Film Grain and, Grain, and Hughes always hit me with a bit of nostalgia as a child of the 80s and early 90s. I can understand that. Kodak Gold was everywhere. I love the feeling of being reminded of those earlier times when gandering at images on Kodak Gold. So thank you. Melvin Moten emailed. He said, without a doubt, my favorite film stock is Kodak Gold. Its balance is perfect for shooting in daylight and indoor as well as studio lights, both strobe and tungsten. And the way it handles skin tones is a huge plus. It's been my go-to color stock since the 90s. We're getting a lot of nostalgia here. So I was gonna save this one to the end. We have a special guest that has also chosen Kodak Gold, but I'm just gonna include it now because I'm really excited about it. I reached out to Jason of Grainy Days, who I'm sure you know, and asked him to contribute and let us know what his favorite film stock is. So let's read out what he said. I did consider like dressing up as Jason and putting a beanie on and being all like, oh, but I'm just going to read it as Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> So Jason said, hey Lucy, lately my favorite film stock has definitely been Kodak Gold because as the name implies, it literally renders the image with a warm brownish gold sheen, like an antique. While that can be hit or miss for a lot of photographers, I find that I try to lean into that look more often than not. Unlike real gold or Portra 400, it also doesn't cost an arm and a leg and a blood sacrifice to come by. It's always talking about blood sacrifices. While on the topic, it renders the color red gorgeously, which is probably how it came by the nickname that only I call it, the serial killer's film stock. Relatable. Overall, it is a very saturated film stock and will definitely deliver some grain, which is a win-win in my book, which is Catcher in the Rye. Cheers, Jason. I also love Catcher in the Rye. Okay, and Jason's included two really awesome photos. The second one of the car is showcasing like the red that he was talking about. And when I was reading this out to my partner, I realized that I have a few shots on gold because I've only shot it a handful of times and someone bought a print of one of the photos and they were convinced it was Ektar because the reds were like so vibrant. And I was like, no, it was gold. So yeah, Jason's definitely onto something with the whole Kodak gold blood sacrifice serial killer film thing. No, I mean like, oh, cause you know, he's always, he says like, you know, welcome back to another episode of your favorite low energy yeah. internet photographer. Like he knows he's low energy. Next up is Ektar 100. So I got an email from Acela De Silva. I'm very sorry if I didn't pronounce your name right. And he said, I love the colors and how fine the grain is. I love how saturated the colors are. It is my favorite film to use for portraits, which you don't uh, hear too often, I guess, in like Caucasian skin tones, but in other ones, I've seen some really great uh, images. I know it makes the reds pop quite strongly on some skin tones, but I love that look. I like drawing comic book art and I feel the saturation matches the way I'd normally color a picture. So naturally I gravitated towards Ektar. I thought that was really interesting. And I recently put something out on YouTube saying like, what other hobbies do you have other than shooting film? And there was a couple of people who said that they either draw or like write comic books and yeah, a lot of comic book action. So it seems to be a bit of a crossover of interests there. The photo I've attached is a picture of my friend Lou taken on a beautiful summer day in Melbourne. And this photo is amazing. Shout out to Anthony Ritchie, my 
favorite person in the film community. Uh, he picked Ektar and I kind of predicted that. He said in 120, of course. I just love the colors, those reds and greens and the fine grain. Couldn't agree more and thank you for your image, Anthony. Benjamin Ezekiel chose Ektar, but in a very unusual way. He said, I've always loved Ektar 100. The saturation and color science on that film has always been great at capturing light, but I think it's a gem in low light situations as well. It takes a lot more effort to get good shots since it wasn't made for these situations, but when it's right, the results can be amazing. I know you've asked for a single photo, but I've got two that I can't pick between, so he's added both of them in here, and I'm so glad he did, because yeah, I wouldn't think of Ektar 100, like it's a, you know, a, a slow film. I wouldn't think to use it at night, but it looks amazing. So well done for that. And I think I might give it a go. So next in line are the portraits. We've got 800 and 400. I'm gonna start with 800. So um, H Sing Photos sent through an awesome image. I love the composition in this. It's so good. He said, I'd say my favorite film stock recently would be Portra 400. I remember disliking it initially, but now I just love the warm and recognizable color palette, especially the blue of the sky. RBD Visuals said, at the moment, I'd have to say Portra 800. I really enjoy the way it renders the people and environments I photograph. I feel like it has a bit more saturation than you would see in real life, and that can make for some incredible colors in the photos I take with it. If I had to pick one thing I don't like about it, it would be the price. Definitely, I agree with you there for sure. I really like Portrait 800. We did a portrait shoot with it recently and the photos came out awesome. C.A. Nicola over on Instagram, he said, Portrait 800 is a versatile film stock and it has worked well for me in both daylight and also night with good results. I plan on experimenting more with it. I also like the skin tones that you get from it. Gotta love those portrait skin tones. Here is a photo taken in Chinatown in New York, which is awesome. It'd be a very cool place to photograph. So Young Ansel over on Instagram has sent through some really awesome photos. He said, Portrait 400, it's so crazy versatile. The colors, fine grain, exposure latitude, and sharpness are just it, which I think is probably why everybody loves Portrait 400. So we're moving over from color films now to black and white films. And the two highly ranked black and white films were HP5 and Triax, which I feel like is kind of pretty predictable. Um, I hear a lot of people like really love HP5 and then like some people don't like Triax so there's a bit of a kind of war between the two. Clayton Sharp, Clayton Sharp photo over on Instagram who's an amazing photographer. If you don't follow him, go follow him now. He said, I know I'm gonna sound basic, which you don't, that's fine, but HP5 Plus is my go-to film stock. I primarily shoot it in 35 and currently develop and scan it at home. It's super flexible, easy to scan, and it's easy to find. It's relatively affordable when compared to color, and if you process at home, it's a great option to consider. Very true, and he's included these photos, they are over on his Instagram as well. There's a really cool backstory to this one, and yeah, just a really nice, like, street sort of portrait. Photo to fun over on Instagram. He said, basically black and white films in general are always my favorite, especially Ilford HP5. It's readily available, usually plentiful, and is relatively affordable depending on the deals if you do what I do and you bulk load it. Definitely, I've, I've heard that for sure. For me, film is about the negative and HP5 gets me a negative. It's a permanent record of the physical manifestation of light entering some optical elements at a given moment. And I feel that HP5 does it with a relatively low barrier to entry. And for that, I'm indebted. And he's included this uh, awesome photo very sort of street photography like I hear like King Japes talking about like exposing for the highlights and then getting those like real dark areas and this is so effective and such an awesome photo and the way the two people are placed in it and the black and white of the like David Jones bag as well. It's just, yeah, such an awesome shot. So thank you so much for that. Matt Evans photo, he said, oh man, this is tough. I really wanted to go with color film, which would probably be Ultramax, but I shoot so much black and white. So I just couldn't look past Ilford HP5. The reason is it's versatility. The film has a huge latitude, so it can be pushed or pulled as required. I shoot it a lot at box speed or push it to 800, but this film holds its own up to 3200. So good to know and he's included an awesome photo here. I love this one, so thank you so much, Matt. Edward Iglesias, thank you for your image. I love the outfit of this lady, like this PVC kind of like outfit's really cool. He said, uh, this is one photo that turned out okay. Shot on HP5 on a Yashica mat, so it's 120 film. Um, HP5 is what I'm most familiar with, but I am thinking of going over to T-Max, which leads perfectly into the next film stock, which is Kodak Triax. So Samuel Edmund here, he said, I generally shoot 
and prefer to shoot color, but nothing satisfies quite like Triax. It's not the most forgiving film stock, but for whatever reason, it always seems to speak to me. Even my bad photos look good when Triax is involved. And he has sent through this awesome photo that I have actually shared previously on my Instagram. Uh, I love, I think he said he used flash, I'm pretty sure, and I'm such a sucker for flash. Uh, yeah, this one's really cool, thank you. Unknown Art Division said, Triax is my favorite film because in my opinion, it's how film should be. It's a classic and nostalgic analog look. If I think of black and white, in my mind, it is exactly like this. Okay, so Anthony Collingridge was a very big Triax fan for years, but he said that his allegiance has now turned to Ilford FP4. And I thought we'd just take a look at his um, image here just to sort of see the difference. Um, he said, I've moved more towards medium format and having tried numerous other films ranging from oddballs like ADOC, CMS 25 through to Delta 3200, there is no substitute for a film that can render the finest grain, have a fantastic tonal range and render beautiful contrast at both ends of the scale when developed with commercial developers. Christian, he has emailed me through. Um, he's new to shooting film and we've been emailing back and forth. It's been uh, really fun. He shares his latest role with me and I really enjoy going through that. He said, I have yet to determine an all time favorite film. The only film I've used more than once is Kodak Gold 400, but I can say that my best photo so far was taken with Tri-X 400 on a walk around my neighborhood at night. All art, no color. So this shot is from my first role of black and white Tri-X of a lifeguard post in Manhattan Beach, California. I just love the high contrast. There's a lot to get through in this video. I had so many great submissions. So what I'm gonna do is do a vlog over on Patreon, just talking more about film stocks and my thoughts on them and sort of like a little extended version of this video. So if you would like to see that, the link is in the description below. It's super affordable and there's a bunch of cool stuff on there. So moving on to the other half of the pie chart, the other 50% of you who chose like random film stocks that aren't in production anymore, which is fine, or film stocks where like just one person chose it. And I wasn't really expecting that. I thought like 75% would be like Portra 400 and people would just be choosing like, you know, all of the readily available films. So let's go through some of the sort of lesser known films and I'll point out a few that I was like really surprised by. I did get a lot of submissions and people were really passionate and like really wanting to talk about this topic. So it's kind of hard to put it all in a video. It would end up like an hour long. So I'm just gonna try and show as many photos from people as I can because I really value that you sent me your work and I wanna share it with everybody. So a bunch of people chose like different Fujifilm film stocks, which I know are like not in production. They're pretty hard to get now. They these days and yeah I used to be an avid Fuji color C200 shooter but have definitely moved over to like color plus or just you know Kodak films that are more readily available but I love Fuji I love the greens and yeah just such a nice film so yeah a bunch of you chose like C200 400 like extra superior Gary over on Instagram you chose Fuji NPS 160 which I hadn't even heard of um, I wanted to point out this photo from Tiffany Goolsby, she emailed me and I just absolutely love it. Like the succulent plant and then the three red poles in the background, like, oh, it's just such a banger photo. And this one was taken on Fuji Superior Extra 400. Another thing that people didn't really gravitate towards was instant film or like Polaroid film, but stapled film, he said, fave stock ever is Fuji FP 100C, which I have never heard of. He said, why the colors are perfect. It's instant film and I'm addicted to Polaroid. And he's included these two images, which are super cool. Um, his work is amazing and he shoots a lot of instant film so definitely check him out. Um, NP Jensen he also sent over and said that Spectra is the film stock not in production anymore that he misses the most. I wouldn't have expected many people to pick Polaroid as their kind of like favorite uh, stock of all time and I recently put out a Polaroid video on the channel if you haven't seen it definitely go check it out. It is interesting to see how sort of Polaroid videos like perform People don't seem to be as interested in that as like, you know, medium format or even like 35 millimeter. And um, I don't think the Polaroid is very accessible for people. It's funny because it's kind of like the most well-known type of analog photography. Like if you asked anybody in the world, like, you know, they'd probably kind of know what a Polaroid is, but yeah, it just doesn't seem to be as popular. And I think that's really interesting, but I think the price point is a huge, reason why I know I don't shoot a lot of instant film or pol Polaroid to be specific because of the price. 
So like I said, there were a lot of oddballs. Uh, Molly Anderson chose Silvera Color 100 and 160, which is a film I haven't shot yet, but I have seen um, a couple of videos here on YouTube about it. She said it's hard to get, so I haven't shot much of it, but so far I love what it gives you, which seems to be good contrast and rich colors without being too much or overpowering. I had a couple of people choose Portra uh, 160. Uh, Ryan here said, I'm a fan of Portra in general for its natural colors and skin tones, but feel that the NC version and now the new Portra that replaced both previous versions often feel a little bit flat. Had a couple of people choose FOMO Pan, which is a very cheap black and white film. I have some in the fridge. I've had it in there for ages. I need to shoot it. I think that this is appealing because it's such a good price point. Thank you to Ariella who chose Pro Image 100. I'm pretty sure she was the only person that chose that film. And I do really like that, but for some reason, I just don't really seem to be shooting it as a lot of other films. She said, I love it because I prefer to shoot ISO 100 the most and I just really love the tones and the colors. It's perfect for me, not too warm, not too saturated, just right. So Kate Smith, uh, definitely go over and check her out on Instagram. She is an amazing photographer. She said, I highly rate Ilford XP2 Super for black and white. And I feel like a lot of people kind of like not like snob this film because it's not a real black and white film, but I shot it recently or a couple of weeks ago and I really, really liked it. She said, for me, it's just so smooth and sharp with amazing contrast. As soon as I scanned my first roll of it, I was kind of in love. I wanted to talk about this email I got as well from Matthew, who is Kate's partner. And I love a, uh, like an analog uh, couple. He said, I started out for the longest time with Agfa Vista 200. And I did get quite a few people, uh, including also Matthew, Photo Dude, and Z over on Instagram, he said Agfa as well. I've never shot any Agfa films yet. It's not something I'm familiar with, so I was really interested to hear about it. He said that just one pound for a 24 frame, frame roll from Poundland. Oh my God, I can't even imagine it being that cheap. Usually shot at ISO 400 and so underexposed by stop, giving it, in my opinion, interesting greeny cast shadows. I will always have a slight affection for it. I believe it's repackaged Fuji C200. There's always so many secrets in the film world, things being repackaged and renamed. So definitely check him and Kate out. They're over in the UK and they're just really nice people, really approachable and just, yeah, obviously have a big love for film photography. A few people sent through like, yeah, like I said, random films and um, Stefan sent over Rolly Super Pan 200 black and white. And I've never shot any Rolly films. I have some infrared in the fridge that I'm excited to use. All right, so onto my favorite film stock, which if you've been watching the channel for a while and following me, I think you could probably guess what it is. Ektar 100 for sure. I would be happy if I could just shoot that. It suits location I'm in because it's normally really bright and sunny so I can get away with uh, 100 ISO. I love the colors, they're so saturated. I really want a lot of pop in my photos and I'm like an avid color shooter. The only downside would be that it is on the expensive side so I don't shoot it as much as I would like to but um, I'm pretty happy shooting anything. But yeah, if I could choose, I would choose Ektar. I recently shot a roll of Ektar and I pulled a couple of those images and put them over on my dark room. Um, I'm having a sale at the moment, 20% off all of the prints. I will leave the uh, link in the description below with the discount code so you guys can jump over there and have a look. I was really happy with these images. So a huge thank you to every single person who emailed me or direct messaged me on Instagram. Um, I love doing these videos. They are a bit more work and I'm sorry if I didn't get to feature you in this video, but message me in the next one and I will try my hardest to fit you in. Like this video if you enjoyed it, comment below and let me know if you have an idea of something that you would like to see in a future Lucy Investigates episode because this is a series that I'm going to continue on the channel. Love you guys. Bye.